I love Bing Chat. I use it all the time. And now you as an organization can use it not just for yourself, but for your employees using Bing Chat Enterprise. Bing Chat Enterprise isn't just a new set of capabilities that you have that give you a secure way and responsible way to roll out something like ChatGPT for your own enterprise, but it also saves a lot of costs. It does this in a few ways. Number one, Bing Chat for Enterprise is much more cost efficient because it's included. If you have an E3, a Microsoft 365 E5, if you have Business Standard, Business Premium, you have Bing Chat Enterprise. That's amazing and no cost for many customers. This means there are many customers, ourselves included, that have worked to empower things like Azure OpenAI set services that allow you to use ChatGPT-like capability within a responsible and governed enterprise context. Now you have, of course, that option if you want to go that route to create, you know, chat, uh, you know, to lead chat or, or your organization name chat but you now have a much more cost effective much easier way to enable a beautiful experience and a really rich set of capabilities through bing chat for enterprise so i would really encourage you you know for pure cost reasons number one to consider uh, immediately starting to adopt and roll this out to as many of your users as you feel comfortable to do the second one is that bing chat for enterprise actually has a lot of the data privacy compliance and other governance scenarios dealt with so if you haven't explored its own trust centers and the way in which they've structured it and defined it that's really worthwhile exploring because the way bing chat works is you still have your history right like just like if i search for content etc but it's done in a responsible way that doesn't train the data that doesn't you know have the data leave your organization and so on and so forth make sure you understand the you know the the risk for data leakage and all those things and why it's so substantially beneficial whereas we have seen some customers who we come in uh, after the fact to look at like how they establish these ai uh, tools within their uh, own organization and they may have missed some of these signals so point two is it's not only cheaper arguably free for many uh, organizations, but it's also much safer to use that versus something that's homegrown, especially as we find new ways in which people internally can kind of jailbreak or, or figure out ways around protections. Um, Cause of course this is a growing field and there's always gonna be mistakes made. Having those in uh, Bing chat means that they're almost always updated immediately before you yourselves may experience that because you're delayed on some update or some fix or some change that you have agency and empowerment to do, but may not have the resources to maintain. The third thing that Bing Chat for Enterprise is amazing for is that it's continuing to evolve. And this isn't just evolving based on of enterprise usage, but it's evolving based on consumer scenarios. And there is no question today that what Bing Chat was when it first came out versus what it has now, where it can understand images, where it can understand, you know, multi inflection, like all these things that it can do to understand context and, and the way in which you use it those patterns have greatly improved. Even the way that it deals with prompting, which I'm not gonna get into the prompt engineering, has improved since it first started. So for all these reasons and more, there's a huge benefit to using something like Bing Chat for Enterprise because it's continuing to improve its capability set, which also means that it, it provides um, that value that you'd have to, again, rationalize if you wanted to turn on or enable some of these types of capabilities within you know more Azure private uh, cloud style ChatGPT services. So if you wanted to use Azure OpenAI, again, you're now you both have a OpenAI, you have the Azure service, you have multiple layers of uh, innovation that are happening, but each of those layers have different controls. And so you may not realize the benefits of that for quite some time, whereas some of these other benefits are provided much sooner. Now, again, as I mentioned at the very top, while these are three good reasons to use ChatGPT today, and I think they're pretty substantial ones, they're not necessarily the main reason that might drive you towards using it or having your own experience set. If you need complete control of exactly what feature sets and experiences are available to people, the UX, the layout, the way in which people interact with the agent, like those types of co-pilot experiences, if those are things that are really important to you, then using the framework from Azure and Microsoft to build your own co-pilot experiences or your own chat GPT-like experiences is probably where you're gonna go. But I just wanted to really highlight for many people, because I know we here might hear Bing or, or Edge or other things like that. And for many people in the enterprise world, um, they may kind of not dismiss 
miss it, but may not fully understand the potential implications of it. This is one of those announcements you don't want to sleep on or miss. It's a really exciting change and one of those ones where there really should be very few barriers from you deploying and rolling this out to employees and the benefits are substantial. Um, we'll have uh, another uh, piece of content that'll go up that explains ROI for things like Microsoft 365 Copilot, but you know, early stage research is already showing us 40% uh, in terms of productivity improvement and 18% quality improvement of just using tools like Bing Chat. Um, so I hope you're seeing those kinds of improvements yourself as you start to use it for $0 of investment and just the training and adoption and digital fitness work that you need to do to help people improve. And so, yeah, exciting stuff. We're using it. Our customers are using it. I hope you get a chance to use it too.